Hey everyone, if you currently work in or around privacy, or even if you're just interested in it, then you're probably aware of the increased regulations and scrutiny that have come about in that space in the last few years. With all that new scrutiny, we in the industry are looking for new efficiency in both collecting and leveraging data in our organizations. We really want to be able to ensure that we can effectively track compliance and risk against any system or activity that's handling that personal information. Well, in order to do that, we typically have to reach out to those in the organization who are our subject matter experts. Today, we're going to take a look at the four key assessments that the ServiceNow Privacy Management Application provides and learn how those can help us not only gather information from those subject matter experts, but also to help drive automation, like control association, and risk scoring. To facilitate today's conversation, we're going to look at a specific record in the Privacy Management Application, a processing activity. Processing activities can be associated to anything in the organization that processes personal information, such as a business service or an application. In this example, we're looking at ServiceNow ITSM. From our processing activity, we're able to kick off the first two types of our privacy assessments we'll be talking about today. Those are the screening assessment and the impact assessment. I've already done that, so let's take a look at the first one. Our privacy screening assessment is designed to let us collect initial information about our processing activity. If I go through the questions here, you can see we're able to capture things like general information, and most importantly, things like data subject details, such as the actual elements of personal data that's being collected. There's a lot more questions here, and though we won't go through all of them, keep in mind that ServiceNow allows configuration of these questionnaires to match your organization's needs. The second type of assessment that I mentioned is gonna be our privacy impact assessment. Once we complete the screening assessment, we can send out the impact assessment to help us gather more detailed information about the processing activity. Again, I'll navigate through this quickly so you can get a feel for the questions, but typically these would be more thorough than our initial screening assessment. You can see things like data subject details, data transfer information, data consent information, and questions of that nature. Once all of these assessments are complete, they're submitted back to our privacy team, and all of that information can be viewed straight from the processing activity record by navigating to the Privacy Assessments tab. Looking at the processing activity record, we can also see some of the automation that those questionnaires drive. Our users' responses to the screening assessment and the impact assessment can help us actually map the information objects to our processing activity, which are the actual PII elements, like email address, employee ID, or things of that nature. And it can also help us automatically generate controls for our processing activity. In addition to these assessments, the other two types of assessments we can run from the privacy management application are gonna be risk assessments. If I head to that tab, you can see the two types of those that we offer, which are criticality assessment and actual privacy risk assessment. Typically our criticality assessment comes first, and that's gonna help us drive important details about our processing activity, such as the criticality score. Once we get a criticality score, that can better help us actually determine what risks need to be associated to our processing activity. And for each of those risks, we can actually do a full risk assessment. Let's take a quick look at the two types of risk assessments we just talked about. The first, the criticality assessment, is going to have three categories, and we can ask our users a number of questions across those categories. You can see things like regulatory factors about data processing, factors impacting privacy, and other factors that we collect from the end user. We also get to collect information about our control environment and our residual risk assessment to help us compute our criticality scores. The other type of risk assessment we mentioned, the actual privacy risk assessment, is going to allow us to ask similar questions, but this time we'd be looking at it from the lens of a specific risk rather than from the processing activity itself. You can see here we can put things like impact and likelihood from an inherent perspective, we can assess our control environment as they relate to mitigating that particular risk, and we can even respond to our risk by determining whether we want to accept, avoid, mitigate, or transfer that particular risk. All of this information will, again, be visible back on the actual processing activity record, and you can see that here under the risks or in the overview charts that you'll see there on the record. Hopefully this all helped you understand the four different types of assessments that we offer in the privacy management application. Our screening assessments and impact assessments are super helpful in helping us collect information from our end user and helping us map our information objects and controls. Our criticality assessment and privacy risk assessment help us then determine the actual risk to our particular processing activities. 
and even go a step further in determining how we might want to respond to individual risks that we identify. Thank you for watching.